Hey everyone, this is Kunal Johar again, CTO of Open Water, and today I'm going to walk through how we can build a scholarship program that's taken through a manual process today into Open Water in just about 15 minutes. A couple of months ago, I recorded a video that I entitled Digital Transformation Starts Small, One Person Can Make a Difference. And I want to ask today, can one person really make a big difference? So let's take a look at a sample scholarship. To get today's application form, I just went to Google, typed in sample scholarship, and I went through the search results, and I found this scholarship form from Lehman College. So you can see here, we asked for some name, address, an essay, some information, some more information, and then a longer essay along with a, a self-certification. So when I go back to the question of can one person make a difference, I wonder what it's like receiving a nomination that comes through a PDF like this. For example, if someone fills out the major field, what if they just put in something like yes, minor, no? That might be very frustrating for the person filling this out, or maybe in the email they put in their phone number. You know, that could be very annoying as well. So I do believe that if one person can help out, take these PDF forms for their organization, and convert them into online forms, they can help save their colleagues a decent amount of time. So I go back and I ask the question, can one person make a difference? And I want to say, let's find out, let's see how long it takes for one person to convert this form into open water. In my previous videos, I showed you how you could take a template in open water and add it in just about 10 seconds. Today, we're going to take it a little bit differently. We're going to build this scholarship application form step by step together. All right, here we are in open water. In my second monitor, I have the PDF that I had just shown you, this one right here. And I'm going to follow along and I'm going to build this step by step. And you can see today we're going to start from scratch. Let's give this program a name, General Scholarship Application Form. I can head over to the form builder and I can begin building out the form. Now let's go through it slowly and take a look at some of the important sections. All right, let's go page by page and just take a look as to what I've done. So when I set up the form, the first thing I did was I set the application name field to name. I set it to defaulting to the name of the logged in user. I then set the first text area to first name and the second text area to last name. Uh, this field sometimes can be collapsed into one field where we're just collecting name. This is great if we're collecting organizational information, like a company name, or if it's a project, the name of the project. But when it comes to individuals, it's helpful to have this as two different text fields with the first name and the last name denoted separately. You can see here, this asterisk here red, I have said that this field should be required. Um, there are other things I can do. I can set a field to be hidden from the judges. This is when we talk about the review step, which we'll cover next. Also, I can have an admin only field by hiding it from applicants and from judges if I wanted to, as I'll show you as we get to the last page of the form. Um, there are certain field types like email address. We have uh, drop down fields and radio fields that allow us to put a dependent field. So here, if I choose other, I can add what that other should be. And I went ahead and set those fields to be required. 
Under the nationality dropdown, you see I have the pre-fill option. I can quickly fill US states. In this case, I've chosen countries. Let's take a look at the next page. On the next page, uh, we have the large text area. And here we are setting the word count to 250. I could actually make it a smaller text area. Uh, in this case, medium, small. I can also have special characters with what you see is what you get. I've set a required field count, and I've also set it to be a maximum of 250 words. Next up, we see our table fields. These can be used to collect a bunch of information. If I go here, you'll see I have asked for up to three. In our configuration, I set it up to 10. Uh, I could have gone a little bit more complex as I set these up. Um, I just set it up so that we captured the contact info as a text field, but we could have gone a little bit crazy. We could have collected an email. We could have collected a phone number. We could have also had a radio field that says, you know, contact info, um, email, phone, and then I could have set these as dependent fields. So if I um, filled out email, I could then say, okay, now give me your email, and then I'll set that to required. Similarly, if you gave me the phone number, I would then have a dependent field. But just for sake of simplicity, I didn't add that into our test case here. So table field is cool. We can capture as much information as we want. We could set a maximum. We could set a minimum by making it required. And then we could render the table. You can see here I used the copy feature to quickly copy over um, you know, whatever I had done for the previous table to then build out the second table, third table, and so forth. Uh, checkbox fields also have the option of having dependent fields. So if I chose general scholarships, for example, maybe I would want to add more information. But if we go back to the form here, you'll see I didn't really know a whole lot more with regards to what it meant if I checked off one of these. All right, moving on to the next page of the form, uh, we have the personal statement. You could see the personal statement. I had a thousand words. Let me go ahead and set that as required. And then here it's a much longer section. We could, of course, accept, have accepted a file upload if we wanted to. We could have had people upload a file with their personal statement. And then in their permitted extensions, we could have said we only want you know, Word docs. So Open Water does accept file uploads. And then finally, we have the um, signature block. This is where the person could sign with their mouse or their finger for their certification. On the last page of the form, I called it admin only. This covers this for office use only. And you'll see that I've added two fields here uh, that are listed as hide from applicants and hide from judges. Um, this is helpful when a submission comes in. The office might want to add some information um, as, it, as it comes in. All right, let's go ahead and um, let's set up the review section. Yeah, actually, before we set up the review section, one other thing. It's under personal statement. This would be a great area if there is a letter of reference. We have a feature where you can request a letter of reference. It could be required. Um, and then the way the reference works is you can configure the email that will go out to the person writing the reference. Like, hey, dear instructor, I am applying for a such and such scholarship. Please click here to submit your reference. Um, the applicant get an email when the reference is completed. We can also then configure the fields that the referee should fill out. It could just be a, a text field as we have here. It could be a long and drawn out form. So our training does cover how you could build the letter of reference start to finish, but I wanted to highlight that this is a great area where it could be added. A lot of scholarships have letters of reference. All right, continuing along to our evaluation form, these will be the questions that we will ask. So how well did the applicant perform or does this scholarship deserve a merit award? Okay, so here we can build whatever questions we want. In this case, I have a list field. I can have a numeric field. Let's call this no, maybe yes. So a score of one will give this applicant, a, a score of no will give this applicant a one, a score of yes will give this applicant a three. We can also multiply the score. This is if we have multiple questions, maybe some questions are worth more than others. Let's go ahead and also add a free text question, call it comments. 
we'll call it of type free text and we won't make it required. Excellent. So we've now built out the evaluation scorecard. Um, other things we can do, we could set up a confirmation page, we could set up confirmation emails so that the scholarship recipient knows that the, that the item has been received. We can also uh, set up a mode that requires approval. So as a submission comes in, maybe we want it approved by a staff member, maybe that staff member should go ahead and add the GPA before it goes to judges. With regards to judges, we have a configuration called the evaluation layout. This is what the judges see. I'll take. I'll show you what it looks like with no configuration. The one thing that most people do under the configuration is they might want to hide fields from judges. If we wanted to do that, we can just choose hide field from judges. Makes it a little bit more fair. All right, let's go ahead and let's submit a test entry. So to do that, we go back to round settings, uh, open and close dates. Let's open it up. Let's open up the judging while we're at it. Press save. Here we go. Here's our general scholarship application form. Just want to compare it side by side to the PDF. Name, address, phone number, and so forth. Here we have name, address, phone number. You can see I've chosen to move the honors and distinctions onto page two. And I've chosen to set the personal statement essay here and also have that letter of reference we talked about. Um, so there you have it. Very quickly, we have built this form. I will go ahead and I will submit a test entry. All right, I've submitted my entry. Let's take a look now. I'll add myself back as a judge. Fresh, take a look at what it's like as a judge. And now I can review what was submitted with a no maybe yes deserves a scholarship so in a real world situation you'll have a lot of different scholarship entries you'll have a handful of judges they'll all do their review once you have the review open water will tabulate that information let's take a look at that here we are back on the open water admin side i can go to tools scores and results go to judging results here, it will show me all the scholarships. It'll take the average score that all the judges have provided. Here, we only have one entry. Um, I can go ahead, I could check that entry off. I could mark it as winner. And now I will know that that person should be a scholarship recipient. All this information can be exported. After getting all the data into finances hands and you know getting the exports out of the way, the final step is typically notifying the scholarship recipients. So let's take a look in open water how that might be done. So here we are. I will go to tools, email wizard, and you can see here we have a whole bunch of canned emails. I can also build a new email from scratch. In this case, I want to pick the applicants who are winners. I can go ahead and load up that email. It's, it's pre-configured. I can build out a template and then I can send that email to everyone that has received their scholarship. So congratulations, scholarship winner. Maybe I want to include their name. Here I have their name. And I can take a look at a preview. Here we go. And of course, my name is system, as in system admin. So I can build an email, I can send it right away, or I could schedule to send it into the future. Uh, thanks for following along. Open Water is completely free to learn. If you are running a scholarship program and your organization is not sure if Open Water is a right fit, please visit learn.openwater.com. 
you can use our free sandbox. Build out the form I just built out, show your organization, hopefully we can save you a lot of time. I'll conclude by asking the question, can one person make a difference here in about 10 or 15 minutes? I have built out a complete application form with a review cycle and I've allowed other people to submit in a way that will make collecting information a whole lot smoother. Thank you.